Hello and welcome to DCP Side Quest, episode number one zero nine. Totally on time. One oh nine. Totally on Whoa. time. Not late at all. I mean, totally hey, on time. One oh nine. If you just listen to the audio, you have no idea whether we're yeah, late. It's never or not. late. Well, yeah. I feel like I feel like at times like this, it's important to quote our good friend Gandalf. Right? Yes. A wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he intends to. Absolutely. Well yeah. said. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. So we're not yep. late. Nope. And we have we have enough beards to pass as wizards. Yeah. So I feel like. <laughs> That we are, right. in fact, a and, wizard institute. And warlock, exactly. and war, you are a warlock, so. Oh, you know. Whoa, 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 let's not be crazy now. Like, <laughs> come on. Like, oh, it, we were doing so well. Why did you have to ruin this? <laughs> Had to play Trials exclusively as a warlock this entire time. <laughs> Yikes. Exactly. <laughs> How long does uh, that purgatory last? Forever. Until February. <laughs> Yikes! Basically forever. Yeah, <laughs> basically forever. We are in a time loop, playing. you could say. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey. if you yeah. just stop playing Destiny, then you won't have to worry about it. Oh, that's true. <laughs> yeah, too bad. Trials is good now. <laughs> <laughs> I've right. just seen the picture that uh, that has been replaced by a certain uh, Briar Rabbit. Briar. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, he's out golfing today, doing. Golf things. He's being a dad. In his Crocs. Yeah, in his Crocs. He's being a trust fund baby dad. <laughs> nice. He's out living that trust fund life like Briar does. Is. You know, he's trying to avoid getting eaten per usual, right? Well, we are trying to eat the rich. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, so, so yeah, there's a lot of so, stuff to talk about. So, so there was a Sony conference. Showcase. Oh God! Yeah, oh yeah! Oh. God of War! God of War Ragnarok! It looks so good. Dad bod Thor. I love it. I love it. I I love it even more because people are getting angry about it, and I just love seeing them cry. I'm like, this is great. There's the side that's angry, and then there's the side that's like, because I think that is a more realistic depiction of what he's described as yeah. in yes. like the lore. So there's the people who are like, well, this is how he's described. So we're finally getting like an actual authentic Thor. And it's cool to see a guy that's not chiseled and per perfect being a god. Mm. Well, yeah. underwear it's model impressive. Thor versus <laughs> actual strongman Thor. <laughs> exactly. True. Yeah. It's funny. I, I love mm -hmm. how people, I love how like people's reasoning like just doesn't make sense. They're like, well... This isn't really going to be very. I'm like, so, so keep in mind, this is mythology, right? These are basically <laughs> fictional characters. Like, th this doesn't really make sense, right? This, this, this couldn't possibly be. He, this guy, this guy's big. How could he it possibly? It doesn't add like, up. So, I'm like, so hold on a minute. You're okay with a giant serpent that encases the earth. You're okay with Fenrir, a wolf who can eat the moon and the sun. You're okay with the lady who basically lives, lives in hell and just lets the dead people go there. And you're okay for the warriors to go to Valhalla and have a party forever, but a big yes. guy can't wield a hammer. And run around okay. This okay. seems like some fat phobia, if you ask me. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And I'm oh, just like, man. if you read North mythology, you really realize? Do you realize how much this guy drinks? How much he eats? <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm just telling you, that's a strong man diet. But what does he lift? Right. Exactly. That's the real question. Right? All the strong men look like that. Go yeah, watch exactly. the competitions. You got to have you a massive get... core to be able to lift all that weight. Precisely, mass moves mass. Like you don't, you don't lift five hundred and one kilograms, looking like, uh, what's his name, Chris Hemsworth. No disrespect, <laughs> but you don't. He can't lift five hundred and one kilograms, right? But Eddie Hall and <laughs> Thor Bjornsson can, hmm. could. Yeah. They're exactly. training boxing now, and they he kind of looks like now Thor. Look Get yeah. out logic. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. So aside but from yeah, like uh, belly fat politics, Project uh, Eve. Sorry. <sighs> Project E. Well, no, hold on. We're talking about we're talking about God of War. God of War looks amazing. I cannot wait. So it does good. look amazing. It does. I cannot wait for the story to continue. Like I, everything about it got me excited. It is weird. Boys bigger, the, bigger boy. Boys bigger. Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm. Boys riding around on that mythical. And He's got that teenage voice going on now too. You hear that? Yeah. He's got like the the yeah. voice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah, right does, before it fully kicks it. Yep. Yeah, it's exciting. Like a. Uh, yeah. Su super excited to see more of that. I mean, the first game for me was awesome. I really enjoyed it. I know some people felt like combat was repetitive, but I I really enjoyed the parry mechanics and the system. Yeah, in there. I it was. It. Yeah, yep. it was difficult in some of those. Phew, some of those uh, encounters. That's what we like. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Good stuff on that. Yeah. Project Eve. 
Project Eve, my favorite game of the showcase. It's got everything I want. It won't pack. It's it was it was actually really pretty. It was it was funny, right? Because you know how that trailer kept going. It was like <laughs> yeah. at first it was like, oh, this this trailer looks like a bit of like DMC. And then suddenly it's like another element. It's like, oh, it looks kind of horror. There's like another, it's like, how many genres are you going to merge into this game? And then the, every time the trailer keeps going, I was like, oh, and you're now going to do some Bayonetta and now some DMC and now some horror game and now some this and now some... like, calm down. <laughs> yeah, especially for an announcement trailer of like a brand new game that we haven't seen before. We got cinematics, we got gameplay, we got like a pretty good idea of what the combat's going to be like with the big mm. bosses and then the smaller enemies and it just looks it just looks kind of perfect. I saw a parry mechanic, I was like that's great. You sold me. The hair technology on that woman is nuts. Hair There's a reason. There's a reason why video games don't tend to use very long hair because it's mm. you 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 animate one little piece wrong and it's clipping through everything and looks terrible. Or you know, have people actually put on the clothes when you're trying them out in the clothes thing? Be like, this is it. <laughs> it's not just going to appear. They're actually going to put on the jacket. Be like, yep. check this out. There's a reason why people don't model that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and yes. Yes, skin tights. Yes, we know. Listen, we know what the she has a very shiny body. Okay, <laughs> and it's a great body. <laughs> but yeah, it looks. Uh, you know, eyeballs have eyeballs, and spooky, yeah. weird-looking monsters, and bosses looked big and awesome. So yeah, I'm I'm very looking forward to that game. Cool. Very excited. Nice. What yeah, else was me. there on the uh, on the showcase? There was God of War. <laughs> <laughs> they happened to show God, God of War, War. there. <laughs> I remember uh, that the... cute game that was where you're like become the animals. Oh, the door of the yeah. explorer kind of game. Yeah, that looked kind of interesting. I wasn't that interested, and then it was like, oh, this is actually kind of cool that you're just like becoming any animal. Yeah, mm. it suddenly inhabits an animal or possesses. It's possession, cute possession. It's, it's a horror game <laughs> for the animals, <laughs> it's at least. Exorcist, <laughs> the bliss experience. <laughs> Yeah, I liked it, except for the fact that the character models looked like someone just stuck a circle on for their nose. Everything else I was like, it looks super, super, super cutesy. But then when they face, I was like, it just looks like someone's gone to do 3D modeling. And they haven't like like worked out how to join it. So there's like, boop. I'm like <laughs> but anyway, no, it did it did look kind of fun. Like it, it there were there were I wasn't immediately sold on it, but there were some fun sort of like, yeah, it looks like a happy game. Yeah, mm-hmm. for spoken. That was the the other big mm, one of the Sony yes. conference, which is the new Square game, right? Um, which is the Unreal Five engine game. It's the game that initially they showed off Unreal Five with, and uh, we got to see some more of it. Mm. And it looks very interesting. It's um a girl. It's it is Isakai the video game, correct? Yes. Uh, she goes, she's just a normal girl, and then she gets transported into another world. And I really like that they showed the the voice acting and stuff, because she is also like, what the hell is happening? Did mm-hmm. I just shoot something out of my hand? Mm-hmm. And I, I like I like that. I dig it. And the movement looks good. Combat looks good. It's just a very Yeah, the movement looks really game. nice. Like, yeah. they're just traversing things and, like, just vaulting over them, sliding, almost, like, surfing across the environment. Like, ooh, yeah, I mm-hmm. like it. Yeah, it looked really cool. I'm very excited for that game. Mm. Yeah, very cool. And they uh, have a pretty all-star cast on it as well, with both writing, music, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm, so it's mm-hmm. it's and they're bringing bringing out the big boys. I'm excited. Yeah, interesting. This is you know that Unreal Engine five game. I'm I'm curious when like we're finally going to see an onslaught of those titles come to fruition. Yeah. You know, because like there's some pretty exciting technology in Unreal Engine five. Yeah, I feel yeah, like it'll be a couple of years still. I feel I feel like it's it's always that you know that new console generation launches and people are slowly starting to find their feet with tech and stuff. And it's normally like mm-hmm. midway through the generation towards the end of it that people really start to like really show it. But yeah, I feel like especially now with like COVID development and stuff, it must be like more difficult. So mm-hmm. probably a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. for sure, for sure. Mm. Um... And then they obviously also showed uh, Insomniac. We're like, we're not just working on <laughs> Spider Man Two. Oh, we're man. working on Wolverine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Any anytime Insomniac makes a video game, I'm like, I'm listening. Yeah, mm. definitely. You well, don't even need to show me much, really. I'm I surprised. They, I mean, they're they're doing double duty here. They've got Wolverine mm-hmm. and they Spider are, Man yeah. Two in the oven, and I, I I just assume that Insomniac is like, let's. They're like a bullet, you know, laser laser focused bullet. I guess not. Yeah. I guess they have multiple teams guess, doing a lot of stuff. I guess to 
Yeah, I guess to a degree. I mean, like, I would assume a lot of the foundation of what they would use for Spider-Man 2 will be built in Miles already. Um, right. So yeah. there's, in, in kind of development sense, it's probably easier to spin up Spider-Man 2 than it would be Wolverine, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not, yeah, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, unless because uh, we haven't got dates for either of them, right? They're both like quite far out. But I mean, I'm guessing it'll be yeah, like Spider-Man, Spider-Man probably... was 2023. So yeah, and I, I I wonder. I don't know. Do you think Wolverine will come out before that? Or after? I feel like I mean, I would assume I feel after. Like it's, yeah, I would assume after, just because like yeah. Spider-Man seems like the logical next thing. You know, you've a left it on a cliffhanger. B, you've got the framework for Spider-Man built already, so you can yeah. just expand on that. Whereas Wolverine, I, I mean, this is going to be a fundamental change. Uh, it was just, yeah, it was just a, a man at a bar with hands that turn into claws, and that's yeah. all we got. So. The, yeah, they were literally, it's early. yeah, we got a very early like trailer, basically, no gameplay whatsoever, <laughs> and they even said it was not actual gameplay footage, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is just yeah. a rendering. So clearly, Wolverine is out, and yeah, I would imagine it's after Spider Man Two. You make a good point, mm-hmm. though. Most of the technology is probably built already for what they want to do with Spider Man Two. Yeah. yeah, you just have to build art assets and you know hit unless they hit unless the go like, button. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All they're gonna do is press the new game button, right? It's new game easy. button, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> unless they do, um, unless because like they've had success with Spider Man and stuff like that, maybe Sony are like, "Yo, you've got a huge budget," and maybe they've just like hired a boatload of people and Insomniac suddenly got like a double team thing. Yeah, well, uh, apparently there is two teams. Uh, D Ward and Chats so and two teams: one in Cali and one in North Carolina. So that's oh, I had no I idea. See. For some so reason, I've always they thought could of it as come one. out whenever. It could, yeah. If there's two teams. Yeah. It's probably yeah, I wonder. It's probably a Sony decision at that point of how they want to position mm. it. I wonder how they're gonna do it. Yeah. Very exciting though. I mean, Insomniac yeah. developing a Wolverine game. Hundred percent, yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. <laughs> and we saw what they did with Ratchet and Clank with new technology. Oh yeah. Great. So I can't wait to see what they do with other games with this new technology. It's really exciting. It is. It's super exciting. Yeah. And hopefully people will be able to buy a PS5 by then. Hopefully. By 2023, maybe. Possibly. Yeah. Hopefully. There'll be five more PS5s available. By then. <laughs> It'll be okay. Just five. Just five. Uh, oh, we also got the um we got the Star Wars. Some Star yes. Wars news at the Sony conference. Uh, yes, a remake, not a remake. Full, it's a full remake, right? Yeah. They were dancing the line. They're like, it's not a remake, but it's remake, but it's not a remake. <laughs> they said they built it from the ground up again, so it's a remake. All right, <laughs> they had to build it from the ground up. <laughs> uh, I never played the original, so I'm excited to have uh, have that experience. Yeah, fresh with new graphics. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people will love it. So uh, there's a reason for that. I'm mm-hmm. excited to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pretty much everything at the Sony conference, I was like, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah for the most play part. That. Since Briar isn't here, I have to give a shout out to Gran Turismo 7. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole Since none of us are going to mention it. Part, I was like, <laughs> Briar must be so happy right now. Well, they, know, I, I, they, they even talked about the uh, having the 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 haptic triggers give you feedback mm-hmm. on the, the the pedals yeah. and all that and like the braking. And I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. Like I'm not into these games, but I'm totally excited to experience that in Gran I've, Turismo. I've got to say though, right? It kind of goes back to the conversation we had pre-show when we were talking about how like um, for Death Loop, they never really sort of demonstrated it very well. So kind of from the trailers, didn't look super, super interesting. I mean, like to be very clear. I've got lots of friends in the industry. I mean, zero disrespect by this. I know lots of people work very, very hard, right? But Gran Turismo is the most boring looking game I have ever seen, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but I was watching that trailer and I'm just like, and again, I I, I, I like cars and I respect car cars enthusiasts, are cool. right? <laughs> we right? don't like car people. Right, right. <laughs> but I feel like that trailer was made for the sort of person that goes over and every single day polishes their car and is like, oh, this is very shiny today. I like this. This Two is fantastic. Two coats of wax, man. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm sorry, but like, I don't really care that the fact that the wheel feels slightly different going over two blades of grass as opposed to one. I'm just like, <laughs> this is this is like, and even museums. <laughs> museums are interesting, but this is like museum, the video game of boredom. And I'm just like, why museum do people... the video game of boredom. <laughs> Put that on the review when it comes out. Eric says. <laughs> and I'm just like, 
how do people like and maybe if you got a cockpit and you can sit there with your wheels and stuff like that like cool but i'm just like how do you look at that and be like pre-order i'm just like <laughs> <laughs> hey if you're a fan of the race cars man true 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 you know true. race please, culture like, and all that please don't go after me comments no, why does Briar like it because he owns race cars he doesn't need this game he, he wants for, for Ferrari Fridays. Every he day. wants every aspect of it in his life, even in the digital form. He wants race cars. True. I, th- I think the haptic feedback is going to be really cool with that game, though, because I'm with you. I'm, it will be. Yeah. I'm like, ah, I could care less about a racing game, but with the mm-hmm. PS5 controller, how cool it feels with various, yeah, like like the the triggers having resistance and where it's at, and like I, I think that could be really cool. Oh no, yeah, this thing. I'm sure it'll feel great to play. But it's one of those things where, it's, like, for example, for, for the longest time, because, I mean, back when I used to work at Microsoft, I worked on Forza, right? So there was always the eternal battle, like, Forza versus Gran Turismo, right? I'm yeah. like, but at least when you have a Forza trailer, right, even if it's not motor, even if it's not Forza Horizon, like, Forza Motorsport, the, the, they're their equivalent of boring the racing game, right? <laughs> like, at least their, their trailer is, like, it'll start with, like, a close shot. There'll be, like, some sunsets and some, like, fast-moving things, some cars drifting. They'll never have, like, a... I'm taking a driving test and like look at my yeah. shiny car. No, I, I feel like, you on that. The the Forza yeah. trailer was <laughs> definitely better. And they, you know, they showed the gimmicky social features and be like, hey, so and so, hey, you want to team up and do this weird game that we're suddenly grabbing boxes on the road? I was like, okay, that's weird. But, you know, it was more interesting looking than the Gran Turismo one. Yeah. Did they show both at the conference? Both, uh, both I was going to say, because I didn't notice that they showed two different games. So hopefully they did. No, no, no. We're just talking about back when <laughs> yeah, they did the Forza say, trailer. It wasn't that bad that I couldn't tell when it switched from one. No, no, no. Forza <laughs> would have nothing to do on Sony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was Xbox like, exclusive. I was very like... confused. <laughs> That was all confused yeah, all around. Side by side. You would you you could you could blend these two but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they do. They, they tend to blend each other. Yeah. 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 They, it's a they car are, game. Yeah. Games, yeah. Car game. It's highly detailed, and if that controller lots feels of people really good, love it, they keep making them. Yeah, so, it's know. like Madden. People that, buy Madden all the time. The, it's true. It's true. But that, that's the funny thing with we grant. I mean, I'm I'm not trying to turn this into like a I'm I'm, I'm ragging on Grand Turismo fans, <laughs> but like, but every time I speak to someone that likes Grand Turismo, they're not just they're not like oh the racing feels good or the handling feels good. They're like the cars look really good. I'm like, so the graphics are good, but this is a driving game. Like, how does the driving? No, no, the cars look really good. I'm like, okay. <laughs> They so got that photo perfect. mode. You know, they want to set them up as if it's like in their garage. That's true. I feel like I, th- I think that's how people play Gran Turismo. I think I think everyone that plays Gran Turismo has like a 100 inch ultra wide TV, and they just put it on the screensaver mode so they can look at the cars. I don't think they play the game. <laughs> they want so they set it up in the garage next to their Aston Martin. Mm-hmm. You know, their Ferrari, yeah. Aston Martin. Maybe they got some exotic one off BMW off in the corner, and then they got their uh, Gran Turismo game. In the so yeah. All Gran Turismo players they're rich. are billionaires. Yeah, okay. they're mega rich. Yeah. yeah. Okay. They don't play the game. They just watch the game. <laughs> <laughs> they're well, going to come off me in the comments yeah. and be like, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to another car game. It was really nice that they gave us a bathroom break and uh, put GTA 5 on there for a second. <laughs> right? Was For the eighteenth nice year in a row, we've got more GTA. Yep. Guys, I've got I've got a fantastic idea, right? How about yeah. in the future, <laughs> these two studios combine and they bundle GTA Five and Skyrim? Ooh. Yep, you should. Because yeah. they keep re-releasing both these damn games. So why yep. don't we do a bundle where I can just buy them together? <laughs> yeah, but you've already played this bundle. <laughs> <laughs> for the and you've probably already bought this bundle five times over yeah yeah new generation we made this game one again. pixel look better though it's a better <laughs> pixel yeah that's the other thing too it doesn't look like it's been upgraded visually every time i see gta 5 i'm like it just they keep putting new stuff in this game but it doesn't look mm. like it's been upgraded right i Maybe guess the has. same kind of thing is I like played it. yeah i mean i guess it's the same kind of thing is like um wow for the longest time right it's like why do they need to because there's so many millions of people playing it they're like i mean we could spend the time doing yeah. it but like or we can just churn out another expansion and then people will sp- like spend money on it so yeah, another heist yeah so desert yeah, heist, exactly, right? you know some crane in the desert heist yeah yeah and things don't even need to make sense in gta anymore. they're like we're gonna put a space rocket in and a jetpack car and someone yeah. was using like a, a ray gun today to like boost cars around like oh, yeah i'm okay. sure they got bezos bucks in there or something you know go hunt bezos yeah so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's that's GTA Five. Yeah, <laughs> cool. 
but Sony <laughs> conference was very fun. Had a good. Time. I mean, there was a, there was more stuff. They showed more of um, the Tiny Tina's uh, Wonderlands. Mm. Oh, side note: they used Baby Metal Gimme Chocolate in the trailer, and wow. as soon as as soon as I heard, da 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 da, da I was like, oh my god. Well, I'm getting DMCA'd, but I'm having a good time. <laughs> it's uh yeah it's interesting because i think i heard i think i was watching fran react to this and he said that he thought it would be le a little bit less borderlands but it's very much so borderlands i think it was i think yeah. a couple of people were surprised to see like guns in this kind of mm. like fantasy dragon world yeah, I was I was in the same mind because like from what I'd heard of it before, they were really like we're trying to push like classes, right? And like it's gonna be like in yeah. the borderland setting, but like we're really trying to push like and obviously we saw different races, like there's an orc and stuff, and we saw a few like magic abilities and some like melee stuff, but you're right, like fundamentally, if you hadn't have told me if I hadn't seen the the, the Teen's wild card and I hadn't seen a few snippets of like an orc, I would have just thought it was a Borderlands DLC. Like it looked very Yeah, so that that's my takeaway on it is they are following the formula of Borderlands 2, with the exception of making the Tiny Tina's DLC an expansion and turning it into a mm. full-on game. Because when they did this mm. for the uh, for Borderlands 2, like they apparently just doubled their budget. They went way over budget and uh, did way more content than they thought they were originally going to because it was just so fun to make the original DLC for Borderlands 2. Um, and I, I have a feeling... Like looking in from the outside, looking in, it feels like they were probably going down the same path and being like, why don't we just make a brand new game with this universe and break mm -hmm. all the rules that they already broke or break all the rules that they put in place for Borderlands to make a, a, a game that has all these fantasy elements with guns still, which yeah. that checks all the boxes for me, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm definitely going to play it. It's it's interesting because so from one of the scenes it was like Tiny Tina and everyone was sitting around a table and she threw dice, mm -hmm. which mm. makes me think that you're playing within the world of their like D&D &D game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I I it's I want to see how they're going to do that. Like how does that come across in the game? Cuz that's a cool concept that you're totally. yeah. kind of having all these characters narrate your D&D &D experience, but you are the D&D &D experience. Well, maybe that's a roguelite experience also that they're putting in there. Like you have different things Ooh. happening with that yeah, I don't want to I don't want to specifically say roguelite, but you know, like those mechanics mm. where variables change with each playthrough or there is like a replayability type of thing. You keep building up your characters and bringing them through well, the Wonderlands. Um, DSB Prime in chat has more information than us because he's a professional podcaster. Professional, like yes. I said, <laughs> uh, you can create your own characters. You can choose between six different class and you travel on a tabletop board game to get between areas. Melee, magic, uh, and guns. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. The tabletop yeah. one was cool because we saw like a tiny bit of that in the trailer where you see the yeah. more, like chibi characters moving across, which mm -hmm. is... That's the thing. Like, I feel like I mean, like you know, I, I enjoy Borderlands anyway, so I feel like I'll get enjoyment out of it. But yeah, yeah. you're definitely right. I just, I just, I kind of just thought when I saw the gameplay that I would, I don't know why I would think that because it's still fundamentally Borderlands. Right. But I kind of almost felt like I would not see guns at all. Hmm. Same, yeah. Like I thought maybe instead of guns, it would be like a million axes or a million swords and shields and staffs and stuff. <laughs> but like seventy-two um, bazillion magic spells. Yeah, exactly, right. But like, I mean, I'm sure, again, I'm sure, I'm sure it should be fun and like being able to play. Uh, but then it's it's always, and this happens in like lots of games anyway. But like, I, I'm always of the mind where like, if I'm going to create my character, I would much rather play a third person because you don't see yourself half the time. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah True. I hear you on that. Mm. Yeah, I, it, like I said, it just feels like this is one of the things that they do with the the universe, or they mm. did with Borderlands Two, and then instead of Focusing it in on the Borderlands 3 engine, splitting it off into a brand new game, which, um, yeah, I think that's great. I'm yeah. excited to yeah, see I'm it. I'm sure it'll be it. fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and Tina's such a awesome character. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, She's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. What'd you guys think of more Guardians of the Galaxy gameplay in there? So they should have absolutely shown this before doing whatever the hell they did last time. <laughs> Because what they did last time at the Square Enix conference was like 20 minutes of some of the worst looking gameplay I've ever seen in my life. It was so bad. The animations were bad. Like the world looked <laughs> extremely pixelated. I was very confused what was going on. Um, and it was just, it looked like a old game. Hmm. 
And the, mm. there was some animation work that, like, the characters were kind of sliding, and it was, it was very strange. Um, so, knowing that I've seen gameplay of the game, enjoying the trailer was a little difficult. But the trailer sold the game a lot better than the gameplay, yeah. but maybe that's because there was no gameplay in the trailer. <laughs> Yeah, I'm 50-50 on it. I'm like, yeah, I might check it out. <laughs> then again, I might just not soil my mind of the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's like, I mean, I still, like, I know that, you know, different, I, I don't know what it is, right? But there's, like, some of the, obviously, Marvel's Avengers did it and Guardians of the Galaxy did it, where they create their own versions of the characters, but they just look wrong. But then on the flip side, <laughs> other places will do it. You'll see Marvel Ultimate Alliance, or you'll see when they showed off uh, Midnight Suns recently and stuff, and like you see different characters in there, and like you're seeing Wolverine, I'm like, it looks fine. So I don't know what it is where one stu some studios get it right, some studios don't, but like I can't if it, if I didn't see that there was a title card that said Guardians of the Galaxy and you just showed me a screenshot, I'd be like, it's probably just some random space game. Like I <laughs> and don't you see, see the raccoon. As soon as you see yeah. the raccoon, you're like, oh, is this Guardians of the Galaxy? <laughs> <laughs> true, true, yeah. So that's the thing. It's like, I, I'm still, I'm still, you know, I'll still check it out anyway, but it's, I am also 50-50 on it because it's like, I haven't wow. seen anything. It, it just looks a bit cookie cutter, right? It's a bit like standard action game with some heroes in, quirky story, like what's new? And not that everything, not that you need to reinvent the wheel all the time. Like some right. games can just be more of what you like, which is fine. But I just haven't seen anything that makes me be like, I have to play that game. Yeah, that's how I feel too. No, nothing that yeah. was like, oh man, I can't wait to experience this. It's like, do I want to experience this? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. At least it's a single player game. So that's good. Knock it out in a True. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> to make a three hour campaign be easy. I'll play it. <laughs> <laughs> three hour campaign. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see they had there was i feel like there was some other stuff in here too showed a bit more death loop which is coming out this week um death loop people are playing it right now when's yeah. the official release date is it right now tomorrow, is this tomorrow? Uh, yeah tomorrow so if you're tomorrow. listening to this it's on the the podcast stuff it's already out yes. yeah <laughs> we could talk about death loop seeing as reviews have been coming in um it's been getting tens a lot of tens. I watched the IGN review on it. I watched the GameSpot review, uh, and both of them gave it a ten. It seems that people are very happy with the meshing of different genres because it's like got mm. roguelike stuff going on. It's got, of course, like the the FPS stuff because it is an FPS. It's got the Dishonored because it's the same studio as Dishonored, but it's got the Dishonored mm. kind of blood going in there. Yep. People seem to be having a good time with it, and also the the voice acting between the two characters that are kind of duking it out in this time loop, mm -hmm. people are really enjoying as well. So it's, uh, it's interesting. Yeah. It's, mm. it looks cool. The, I, I feel like the marketing has been strange on it when like, yes. but when they originally showed it, I was like, just show someone ripping through these guys with badass abilities. You know, like I, I want to see yeah. a pro do all the cool stuff as opposed to mm. the highly scripted, just stop at this point and then look at these two, two areas and then assess your options like no no rip through these people <laughs> yeah yeah i do i definitely agree with you like yeah I, like at, at no point like I, again i mean obviously i'm i'm very much wrong because obviously now i've spoken to people that have played it um it sounds fantastic and i definitely cannot wait to play it but yeah at no point during the pre-launch stuff when they showed trailers was i like, ever excited for the game because i mean yeah, yeah to, to your point that's good stuff. like I, I there's got to come a time when like I'm not sure who decides how they're going to show them, but like, surely they've got to realize that that doesn't get people excited. Like in any game, like even you think about uh, picking random games, like you know, Destiny or Anthem, when they showed off the first time and they kind of do the the cheesy like scripted VO, and it's like, yeah, I've got your back. It's like I don't need to see that man. Come on, like I, I, I take I, I, cover I, behind that rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like there's definitely got to be better ways to showcase that stuff um but yeah no no but conversely i'd say yeah. he's ignoring the fact that the, the pre the pre-marketing didn't necessarily sell it for a lot of people um yeah it seems to be going like down fantastically like i wasn't initially hooked on it because i've I played dishonored and i like, had some fun with it but i'm i'm not always as drawn to first person stuff but the fact that i love hitman games and like the the kind of puzzle solving aspect of like work out the layout work out the best way to set these targets out 
and then like speaking to uh, uh the team that we've been playing through it, it like it sounds really really cool like the concept yeah. of it is very very interesting yeah. yeah, I feel the same way. They the thing the marketing with Deathloop was so it was weird because they showed it all the time. I feel like every conference mm. I watched had Deathloop gameplay, and not yes. a single time did I go, "I want to play this game." But now yeah. the reviews are out, and people are like, "It's a mixture of a roguelike Hitman games. The PvP is very like kind of Dark Souls inspired mm. because they invade your game, and then there's like a showdown between you and the other player." And that sounds that sounds a lot more interesting. I didn't even mm. really I don't know if I really learned about the roguelike mechanics from any of the preview stuff. I assume that there would be because uh, it was a death loop. Right, because of the loop. Um, yeah. But understanding like that you get currency, so you can do some runs where you're just trying to get that currency to then unlock more things to keep with you in another run. Um, yeah, it's the reviews are definitely definitely selling me on it more. Yeah. Mm. I'm excited to play it. Yeah, definitely. I don't definitely know if I have time to play it. Well, the nice thing is, it, I mean, depends on how. Disaster. Yeah, it depends on like because because the nature of the the gameplay because it has to be done in like one loop. Obviously, there's a lot of like discovery stuff, but you could technically speaking do it in like as low as like eight, ten, twelve hours. Like you know, once you start start to learn it, so you could probably do it over a weekend um, mm -hmm. if you know maybe if you want to sneak it in. Yeah, I guess that's one of those things where you have to like if you're tight on money and you can't buy games often, then you do kind of have to mm. assess how much you're going to get out of a game, you know, and if you're going to just play it in one weekend for eight hours, I don't know, it might be the yeah. type of thing that you want to wait for a sale, but you might get a lot of replayability out of it. If you really like the sandbox, you like trying to kill these people in different ways every single time mm. it might be something you get 40 hours out of. I'm also really bad with puzzles and remembering where I'm going. <laughs> so this seems like almost the worst game for me to play. It's like, you know, in the reviews, they're like, well, you know, you never waste a run because you're memorizing the map and that helps you to learn stuff. And I'm like, me memorizing a map? It's going to be a brand new experience every time. Because <laughs> that's part also of being the player that invades another player is you yeah. learn the map yeah. because you can disguise yourself as any NPC. If you don't know the map and you're just some random dude in the middle of the street, I think they're going to figure out that it's not an NPC. I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, definitely, the interesting thing, the thing I'll be interested to see though is like, yeah, how long the, because obviously the PvP in this game is really interesting because the invasion. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you can be playing through your... So for anyone that hasn't, hasn't like, even checked the concept, the concept for Deathloop is obviously that there are eight targets that you need to defeat, and you have to defeat them all in a day. Yeah. So, you know, in a kind of very sort of Majora's Masky way, you'll start trying to do it, and then you have to re like go back in time and start again. So until you eventually get your full run. But then somebody can invade your world, like, when you're about to kill the eighth target, kill you, and then you got to start again. Uh, I mean, if, you, if you're being invaded, you can, you've basically got three lives, so you can, you've got a bit of leeway, but still. So there's, but it's interesting that because obviously the people invading are players, which right now is quite exciting. But if you fast forward, say, like, say if someone does, like, you know, wait for a sale or things like that, if, if you fast forward three, four months when like the initial wave has been done, what will the invasion scene look like? I know there's like, there's AI instead, so you can rely there on AI is, instead, yeah. so you can still have it, but it's just like, I feel like there's an element of the game where, you kind of want to play it now that it's come out, just so you can kind of if it, maybe maybe you don't really care about that. Maybe you don't want some rando invading your world and just ruining yeah. your your day. But if you kind of want that experience, I feel like it's something that might be missed if you don't play it within the next like month. Maybe, yeah. Potentially, or, I don't know. Yeah, or after three months pass, is going to be like a hardcore subsection of like a hundred death loopers. Yeah. Yeah, just... they own the like the freaking <laughs> souls dudes who only want to go in and break your armor. Those guys, just, those guys are going to be in death loop. They just know every um, little detail and can spot every yeah. tiny, tiny thing and be like, oh, gotcha. Ha, shouldn't have let me invade. <laughs> and I saw oh, also your the, the PvP invasion is opt-in. So it's automatically off to just be the AI that invades you. Because mm, um, okay. it is part of the story where she's kind of trying to stop you from completing the death loop. Right. Um, so yeah, you, you do have to turn it on. So if you are someone that's like, ooh, I don't want to be invaded by people... Yeah, you don't have to. There you go. You don't have okay. to. Cool. I'm excited mm -hmm. to try it out. Yeah, I wanna I wanna try it out, but also I don't have any time. What do you um what's uh, what's on the docket? I'm playing Tales of Arise. 
How's it going? Yeah. <laughs> it's a very good game. <laughs> it's really so good. good. It's really good. Tales of Arise is... So I'm only about seven hours in, which means I have about a month to go until I finish. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Halloween and, uh, is be almost over by the time we finish, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's... <laughs> I kind of I fell in love with it almost immediately. It's it's a very dark story at the beginning with tales, which normally it's kind of a bit more not so serious. But it's like slavery, defeat the slaves is how you start off. So it's definitely a serious topic. Wow. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing that I love about tales games is the banter you get between the characters. Like it's always so funny to listen to them talking to each other. And that's been incredibly enjoyable. And the combat is really fun. It's incredible. The combat is yeah. extremely fun. And it's very in-depth as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. Eric's has finished Tales of Arise. Yes. I love it. I love it. It's so, it's so good. I think combat is a fantastic thing because I think for anyone that hasn't played them before, if you try the demo, one comment I heard from a lot of people is that like it was super daunting, which it was because yeah. the demo is like, Here's all the characters. Here's a load of abilities. Here's everything. I would also go and fight a strong boss who's going to beat the hell out of you. And you're like, uh, what? But the game, if you've never played it before, the game does a really good job of layering on elements gradually. You know, you start off and it's like, here's how you use arts. Then suddenly, like later on, it's like, oh, here's how you use the, the burst counters and the, all these different things. But like every, even to the point where I was, you know, 20, 30 hours in and it was still giving me new mechanics. So like yep. it's I mean, yeah, so so they do a really really so if anyone played the demo is like I just thought it was just too much like I can't I, I don't even know what's going on don't worry about it because trust me by the time you by the, by the way it introduces to you like I'm I'm at the end of the game now and I'm like juggling enemies doing like hundred hit combos and like feel like a badass and I'm like I would not have been able to do that at the beginning even though I right. played games before um so yeah I think it does a fantastic job of introducing that but yeah I you're completely right, but, agree yeah. with that the demo if anything kind of put me off more mm. more than anything because it's there's a lot you have every character like you said and every character has different abilities and every character has different abilities that are a weakness to different enemies but you don't know any of that information at all mm. whereas you start off and you just have your character and then you have one other character and then they build on that very slowly and it's a lot easier to understand and just when you start feeling like you've mastered one thing the pacing is actually pretty perfect you mm. feel like you've mastered one thing they introduce a new thing for you to get used to mm. so it's the pacing is really really well done yeah and, and the pace. cosmetics are great Oh yeah, they're so good. But uh, yeah, uh, on, that, on that topic of pacing, like that also not just for the discovery stuff, but just the way that the game is laid out. Like I really like this. So like obviously previous yeah. some previous like, Tales games, some of the more recent ones have taken this approach, but some of the older ones like Symphonia, Vesperia, um, were in a very very open world. Like it, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as to call them like full scale open world games, but you know you would leave an area and you get into this big overworld map, go wherever the hell you want, provided you've got the means to travel there, um, which I, you know, there's, there's there's merit to that, but sometimes it can be quite daunting, especially for like me personally, more and more these days, like open world games are super daunting. Yeah. Um, so Tales of Arise has taken a more like wide linear approach. So, you know, like a lot of the time, if you're in like a small area, there's like a corridor you go down, you don't have to like find things too much, but then you, you'll get to some areas where the map opens up a little bit and there's kind of expansive area, but they've done it in a really, really good way. So a lot of the time for me recently, obviously, because I don't have like too much time to play or things like that, I'll always go in line games. I'll be like, I'm just going to go from A to B, not worry about side quests. In Tales of Arise, I explored everywhere. Like, I wouldn't leave an area unless I opened every chest, gone down every corner. And I feel like they structured it in a really good way where it did, yeah. you yeah, you can kind of go into an area, into a dungeon, and there'll be a very definitive path, like, here's your objective. But there'll always be, like, one, two, three, like, side paths, which will only be, like, a couple of corridors. But invariably, if you go down there, you'll be rewarded. There'll be a chest. So there's enough to allow you to explore, and you're rewarded for exploring. But it's not so daunting that you suddenly you've gone off on, like, a five-hour tangent, and you're like, <laughs> now I've lost. Yep. So mm. I think it's been done in a fantastic way. And that and that, that stays true throughout the whole game. Like, it's not like Final Fantasy XIII, where it does 12 chapters of linearity and then a 13th chapter, which is like, it's an open world. Like, they, they maintain that throughout the whole game. It flows very, very nicely. And for that reason, like, I... I have loved every moment of this. Hmm. Cool. Yeah, it's it's impressive. And there's so much you can do with the abilities that you unlock. There's expansive skill trees that are more like skill mm. clusters. Uh, but that's expansive and every character has it. And you can give every character armor and weapons and accessories and all sorts of stuff. So it's it's very good. It's 
very, very, very good. Nice. I'm having mm. a blast. What platforms are you guys playing on? Uh, PS5. I was playing on PC because it launched quite a few hours before console oh. on Steam. Mm. I was able to play it at 3 p.m. Pacific, whereas if I waited, I, I would have been able to play at 9. Oh, wow. Yeah. Shave a few hours off that two-month journey. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Try and get started as soon as possible. I can't wait to do to do the spoiler chat someday, but not not today. Oh, someday, yeah. two years Some... from now. <laughs> two years later, but I see it's, it's it's good as well because like because it's one of those things where I mean you kind of speaking earlier about like sometimes people need to think about you know if they can only kind of got the money for like one game like Tales is going to give you a good chunk of time. Like, I played it pretty efficiently. Like okay, I mean I explored everywhere, um, but even so, I was largely speaking pacing my way through it, and I. I clocked in a story completion at about 55 hours. Um, mm. But afterwards, you know, then I went back and I did some some more side quests. Uh, there's still some more stuff that I have yet to do. I, I feel like I've got to a point where I'm I'm happy where I'm at right now because obviously things other things are coming out. So if I put Tails down, I feel like I've done everything that I want to. There are still a few more like in t- t- typical Tails fashions. There's still some like optional bosses I can go and fight, uh, which I might do at some point. Um, but some of them I have to like grind for. So like there's easily the potential if you if you were like i'm gonna fight every boss get all the armor pieces get all the trophies which means getting to like level 100 you could easily probably close it on like 70 80 maybe even 100 hours um but like i've done a comfortable 60 and i could probably push that to 70 so um yeah i mean there's a lot of like and i i have very rarely make that much time to kind of complete those big games these days but like this one yeah. i'm so glad i did because it is right now probably and factoring in that this is also a year that's had monster hunter rise and obviously i'm a huge monster Hunter fan. right now tales of rise is probably my favorite game i've played this year wow yeah that's a solid very endorsement good. right there mm. very very good yeah i might check it out on xbox actually oh, play it on the big screen you know mm, that'd be good yeah yeah it, it hooks you pretty quickly i would say yeah Pretty quickly, I'm like, oh, yeah, I see what's going on here. I'm collecting mushrooms. I found a chest. I found an owl. Got a new pair of ears. <laughs> and combat feels great. So, yeah, it's... Nice. And the characters are so fun to listen to. Oh, they're so good, yeah. And they're great in English and Japanese. Both are really, really good. Nice. Mm. Cool. Actually, uh, the main character is voiced by our good friend, Mithrax. Oh, Mithrax. That's great. <laughs> oh, Mithrax. Season of the Splicer oh. in Tales of Arise. <laughs> yep. That's cool. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Mm. Yeah, it's um, really good. There is and for a anyone game. That hasn't, oh, yes, no, you go, you go, go. No, I was going to say, for anyone that hasn't, was wondering, because it often comes to the question, if you haven't played Tales of Arise games before, they're all yeah. self-contained, so you don't need to play previous ones. You can just jump in with the Arise and nice. have fun. Great. That's important, because lots of people are like, oh, should I start off? I don't know. Should I start this? It's like, just go for it. You have no reason not to. You yep. don't need to play the others. You don't need to know what you're doing. Like they do a very good job at explaining everything, introducing things at a perfect pace, and it's self-contained. So cool. Mm. You're good to go. Uh, there's a game coming out this week that I will be playing. Oh yeah. I don't have time. Eastwood. But I will play <laughs> Eastwood. No. <laughs> but Eastwood also but comes up this week. There's so yeah. many things coming out in, in September. September is packed. Um, which we should talk about Eastwood as well. But uh, there's a game coming out called Tales of Iron, which is an indie game. It comes out on the 17th, and it's listed as an action adventure, Souls like action RPG. Okay. And um, you had me at Souls like. Yeah, it's, I know. It's like, oh, Souls like you said. Okay. <laughs> and the art style is really interesting. Oh. It's got like this very kind of thick line, outlined characters oh. and backgrounds. So visually, it's very striking. And um, you play as a rat. And also, all mm. the rats in the game are modeled after the Dev Studios pet rats. Pet rat. Okay. okay. Real life rats. Huh. Yeah, so it's um it's an epic arp- I'll just read what it says here actually. So it's set in a grim land plagued by war. Tales of Iron is a hand-drawn RPG adventure with punishingly brutal combat. As Reggie heir to the Rat Throne, you must restore your broken kingdom by banishing the merciless Frog Clan and their ferocious leader Greenwart. This looks great. <laughs> yeah, it's hand-drawn, which, you know, it's got anytime that, you, it's you got tell that, me something's hand-drawn. Yeah, it's got the darkest dungeon vibe. Mm-hmm. the style to it it you know? does yeah yeah outlines. i think visually yeah. it's it's super cool looking visually and it's so it's funny 
I saw the trailer and you were like, you were like, oh yeah, so it's a brutal game. And then like I see this guy get impaled by a spear and then get squashed by a hammer. I'm like, oh, okay, the trailer is, is, is definitely brutal. <laughs> brutal, yeah. Yeah, so I definitely want to check it out, of course, because it's an indie game. So I always want to play something mm. that, you know, hits all of the things that I'm interested in from an mm-hmm. indie studio. So I definitely will be giving it a try when it comes out on the 17th, which was is there Friday. A, was there a demo that you played before? Um, I don't mm. know if there was a demo, actually. Okay. There might have been. I haven't played. I, there, there might have been an early access or something. Yeah, I'm curious I'm sure. if uh, how fluid the combat feels. I know there's a couple people who made videos on it early where they were able to play it. Um, so you could probably find out through watching that. Is this PlayStation exclusive as well? Uh, it's on Steam. Oh, it is on Steam? Okay. Yeah. I don't know where else it's out. Cool. Hmm. Very but cool. yeah, definitely, definitely has my interest. For yeah, sure. it's got my interest now too. Oh, it's coming out on PS5, PS4, Xbox Series X, One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. So everything oh, got it. it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Always nice. impressed when they managed to get their game on literally everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good. I wonder how the Dev Studio feel the fact that all the rats are modeled on their rats, but then the rats can die in game. Yeah. But I then they, how you feel about that? Then they, they resurrect into another session. <laughs> True. You're like, no, Timmy. <laughs> Timmy the rat. <laughs> Maybe they got one named Remy from Remy Ratatouille. Ah, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I sure hope so. <laughs> cool. Uh, anything else this week? Uh, yeah, East uh, Eastwood is on Thursday. Yes. Eastwood is the 16th, which I'm super looking forward to. If any of you guys like uh, Zelda or Mother, uh, it's it's kind of like. Zelda meets Mother meets Last of Us uh, mm. in the video game. You play as like these two characters that go they go together and like yeah, it's, it's sort of like a top down um, style Zelda style adventure. Amazing, incredible pixel art. Like the game looks like visually just looks so good. Like if you, you just, even if you just look at a single screenshot, you're just like, I want to check this out. Mm-hmm. Um, it looks like it's got so much personality to it. The Ooh, team yeah, behind it, it has got like been working on for. A, long i think it's been like since like 2015 maybe even like slightly earlier so it's been a long time but yeah it's coming to switch and pc so i am my switch is ready for that i'm gonna sit down and just enjoy it yeah this looks like a great switch game Mm -hmm. yeah i think this this will be one that i'd play on the switch the environment's just the environments look so good Mm -hmm. so so good it really is beautiful Mm. Cool. So this week for this, awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah, games. Yeah, on Thursday. I think um, freaking Kenna is coming out very oh, soon. Yeah, yeah is like it like the 20, days, nine 25th days? or something? <laughs> soon. Yeah, 20, yeah, 21st or 25th, something like that. Yeah, yeah. And they, um, although for Eastwood, because the development studio said on Twitter, uh, they said, uh, believe it or not, even though it's like an indie, indie game, um, it's coming out, uh, it's, it's coming for about 30 hours of gameplay in Eastwood. Wow. So it's quite wow. a beefy game. So yeah. I want to try and yeah, so I'm glad I finished Tales because I want to finish that this one now before uh, Kenna comes out. Which yeah, that's uh, the 21st yes. of this month, September okay, 21st. 21st. It's really soon. It's next week, next Ooh. Tuesday. Although they did say in an interview for that one, they said that Kenna, you could probably finish in a weekend. So that's not going to be too big. They want it to be okay. like a nice little little weekend adventure you can play. So okay. that won't be too bad. Nice. I'm basically I'm going to be playing Tales. I'm like, guys, we're taking a quick break to play this game. We'll play it in two days. If we're done, okay, back to Tales. I'm going to be doing this for... Regular ever. scheduled programming. Got to play some yeah, trials right. in between, all right? We can have weekly yeah. Tales updates on what your current adventure is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when I finally, like, I finished it, we can talk about yes. everything. Nice. Yeah, a lot of stuff. It's great. It's lots good time. Lots of stuff. Cool. Well, is there anything else? I don't think so. I think that's uh that's the week. It seems like the week, yeah. A lot of good stuff. A lot of good announcements. Yeah. A lot of great things being released this week too. Mm. Looking yeah, it's forward kind of, to it. Kind of yeah. a crazy week. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I guess that is side quest episode number one zero nine. Complete. Yes. Complete. Complete. <laughs> Thanks for watching and hanging out, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, shout out to our Patreon members and our Twitch subs for supporting the shows. And yeah, we appreciate everyone just hanging out, listening, wherever your your podcasting experience is. Um, Eric's, what are you doing this week? Where can people find you doing this your thing? This week, uh, you can find me over on YouTube at Eric's Gaming, where I will be covering some Deathloop with the team 
and then transitioning into some Eastwood. My, they're, my, they're my two focuses for this week. So uh, cool. a little bit of a uh, little bit of stealth, a little bit of adventure. Nice. That's me. Nice. And Watts. I uh, find me on Twitter, Twitch, and YouTube. Just look for Miss Five Thousand Watts, and I will be playing Tails, and also mm. Tails. <laughs> Tails. <laughs> The, the 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 tall tail kind and tails the attached body part kind. Both. All the tails. <laughs> it's a tails week. Uh, and I'm Teft to Teft. You can talk to me at Teft on Twitter, and I will be trying to figure out if I'm going to play Death Loop or Eastwood or Tales of Rise <laughs> or God knows or play more Trials because I've also been playing that. Um, thanks for watching. You're all amazing. We'll uh, see you next week for another episode. Bye everyone. Thank you everybody. Bye. See you later.